Oh, Kevin Lloyd right here, Columbus Black on Blast. It's that time again. Y'all know what we do. We bring it right to you. We're looking at movers, shakers, and creators right here in the capital city that's making it happen each and every day. A couple of key things I want to make sure we mention, right? Make sure you visit the website, columbusblack.com. That's where you'll be able to find cool content about things going on. And for those that have not downloaded the Mile app, you want to make sure you download the app today. It's available on iOS and Google Play Store. That's M-Y-L-E or M-Y-L-E events on Google Play. Download it. That's how you find events, share events, post events, and promote events based off your geolocation. Really cool. But outside of that, it's time to get right to it. I'm here. This is our third episode. We're here with our special guest. His name is Elio Harmon. It's one for startups. He is making it happen right here, y'all. And I'm excited to find out a little bit more about him. And we're about to put him on blast. What's going on, Elio? I appreciate you, Kev. Ah, Thank right. you so much for coming. Absolutely, man. I'm excited to be here with you. So what we're going to do, man, we're going to just kick it off, right? And we want to really help the audience understand a little bit more about you, who you are, and what you're doing here in the community, and break it down for them real simple, all right? So once you start off, tell us who are you, where you're from, all that good stuff. Yeah. So my story is the classic immigrant story. Okay. My family is originally, and I was born in Liberia, West Africa. Okay. Um, grew up there until about the age of 12. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, a little bit younger when we left Liberia. We left Liberia in 1989. Okay. Um, and we left due to a civil war. Gotcha. Uh, war broke out in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were one of the fortunate few who had the resources to leave. Okay. And so we fled to Sierra Leone, which is right across the border. Mm -hmm. A lot of your audience might know, you know, Sierra Leone around blood diamonds and things of that nature. But right. it was all that conflict that kind of sparked those issues in West Africa. Okay. Uh, my father was fortunately able to come to the States yeah. and he brought us over. Uh, and uh, kind of we came over in the winter. Mm -hmm. So my first taste of America wow. was an <laughs> East Coast winter. In New York. Okay. Uh, and <laughs> what an adjustment. <laughs> yes. And so I came over, you know, classic immigrant story, like I said. Yeah. Uh, we really felt like we were in the land of opportunity. Okay. Uh, started middle school out there. Yeah. Uh, and then my dad all of a sudden said, you know what, there's a lot more opportunity in Ohio. Hmm. Interesting. And, you know, kids already don't like to move once you make friends. It's hard enough yeah. when you're from a different country and then you finally get settled and make friends. And so this is going into high school. I was like, Ohio? Like, what what Ohio, the heck right? is like, in yes, Ohio? The last thing you're thinking about and Ohio. I know you can relate to that because you're yeah. from New York. I'm from New York, Spanish Harlem, born and raised. <laughs> yeah. And so we, we, we came over to Ohio uh, when I was in the ninth grade. Okay. Uh, went to high school here, one at Ridge High School on the east side of town. Yeah. Uh, graduated there, went to Wittenberg University. Nice. Uh, but like most young, well, let me not say most, but for some young men, mm -hmm. uh, you know, college feels like the natural thing to do. Right. But oftentimes, maybe you're not quite ready. And for me, I wasn't quite ready because I didn't mm -hmm. really know what I wanted to study. Okay. And so I took those two years to happily party. Okay, happily party. Happily I don't think party. I don't think you're the only student that ever did that though. Okay, I party, <laughs> and you know after two years I still hadn't made a decision. Okay, uh, and you know Wittenberg is is not a cheap school to go to, right? And so I was racking up a lot of college debt, not knowing what I wanted to study. And yeah. in my family, you have two options: mm -hmm. either you're gonna go to school or you're gonna come and you're gonna get a job. Okay. So I chose the job route. I okay. got my start in finance, family yeah. friend, right? Um, without a college degree, so entry level job in a bank. Okay. Uh, worked for Huntington. Yeah. Uh, for a while, and then I moved because you know I was young. I'd only really lived under my parents' roof, mm -hmm. and now I had my independence. I'm working. I'm making money. Right. So I decided I was going to move down to Florida. Moved okay. In Florida for a while, then Atlanta, and then back to Columbus. All the while working in banking. Okay. So fast forward, it's now 2007, 2008, and the crash is hitting. Yeah. Uh, the whole world, at least in finance, is turning upside down. Absolutely. Uh, and I meet a mentor at the time uh, who introduces me to healthcare. Hmm. And so that was kind of my first pivot from my first industry into a new industry. Uh, and his promise to me was, hey, if you get into healthcare now, the future is healthcare. Got it. Uh, and if you could master this particular field, you'll set yourself up for life. All right. And so I was still kind of in the employee mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I transitioned to healthcare yeah. and transitioned specifically into home health. Okay. And home health is a booming industry with the brain of the population. And so that's still my full time job. Right. 
but I've always been interested in entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. So I tried many things. You know, I've embarrassed my wife now, my girlfriend at the time, many times with my entrepreneurial uh, uh, adventures. Yeah. Let's just call it that way, <laughs> That's right? what they were, yeah. Every other week, I'd be coming in with a new scheme <laughs> about how I was going to make it, yeah. you know? And um, I always had that deep inside of me that this is something that I was going to explore. And I wasn't mm-hmm. just one of these people who would think about things. I would try things. Okay. So, I've had many of misadventures in business because yeah. fundamentally, like anything else, you need to learn that skill. But the only yeah. way you could learn business is through trial and error. True indeed. Or if you sit yeah. under the authority of somebody who really understands business, right. that could bring you along. Okay. And so I did my trial and error thing. Yeah. Come last year, I'm kind of just keeping my ear to the ground. Mm-hmm. And I realized that, hey, Columbus is on the rise. Right. You know, Absolutely. I go to Rise of the Rest, yeah. uh, Revolution, Steve Cases, uh, a company mm-hmm. about highlighting what's going on in cities outside of Silicon Valley in New York right. in terms of business growth and startups. And so I decide, you know what? Uh, every great movement Mm-hmm. needs to be accompanied by a great storyteller. True indeed. And so what I decided to do was start 614 Startups as the okay. companion storytelling platform to what was happening in Columbus, at least mm-hmm. in the startup community. Uh, and it, it just started on a whim. Yeah. Didn't do any market research. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Didn't put any money inside. None of that traditional stuff. And told my wife and she just, okay. <laughs> you know, it's another thing. Yeah. And that was my expectation, right? This is okay. something that it's a passion project for me. I'll see yeah. what happens. Right, right. Well, fast forward <clears throat> one year later. Okay. What I thought was going to happen has happened because mm-hmm. Revolution and Forbes just wrote an article on Columbus, Ohio, that we're number one. That's right. For startups. <laughs> number one. Yeah, so it's, it's not a brag or anything. <laughs> right. But what I felt, what I, what I felt intuitively mm-hmm. is actually becoming a reality. And over the last year, we've been fortunate to get a jump. Right. On building a platform that's starting to be recognized as the platform where entrepreneurs come to tell their stories. So oh, that's how I came to be where I am today. That is phenomenal. What a story. Did you all hear that? I mean, what an amazing story, right? The immigrant story, New York, come to Ohio. What's in Ohio? A lot of people say that, mm-hmm. right? And there's, there's obviously some conceptions around or perceptions around what Columbus is. You leave town, you come back. You do the uh, financial industry piece, go into the medical piece, and now the startup piece. Man, you mentioned your adventures, mm-hmm. but don't they call that being a serial entrepreneur? <laughs> it's a serial <laughs> entrepreneur, I think, as long as you actually registered the business at oh, one okay, point. Okay, there you go. Yeah. You actually inv- <laughs> invested some money, uh, you know, put some money behind marketing. A lot right. of the things I was doing, I wouldn't really call full-fledged startups. Okay. Uh, these were basically... Uh, uh, a de facto get rich qu- quick sc- schemes mm-hmm. with a little bit of business acumen right. as I picked it up in bits and pieces, right? Okay. So not really understanding how important planning is. Yeah. Not really understanding how you know important it is to really figure out your target market, what yeah. your target market wants, doing that research. Mm-hmm. Um, not really understanding giving value first before trying to charge, you know, for your services, etc. Right. So I, I think I was really in all of those business applying a, a consultant mindset, not to insult consultants. I mean, they're consultants who really uh, do all the research necessary before they start. Right. But really what I was doing is taking the skills that I had learned as an employee mm-hmm. And trying to uh, go out as a, uh, a, a sole proprietor right. and work with clients one on one. So okay. let's say, um, you know, one of my skills that I picked up in healthcare mm-hmm. and in finance is selling. Yeah, a lot of small businesses can't afford to hire a full time marketing and salesperson. True. So what I would do is create packages for these smaller companies and say, hey, I know you want to grow your business. Right. I can do that for you, okay. and you don't have to pay me what you would pay a full-time person. Let's mm-hmm. do a fractional kind of deal. Right. So it's really taking skills that I already possessed, turning it into a consulting programs, and then selling those consulting programs to people. So I had success there, yeah. but it would never scale beyond just me. Got it. Because Got it. I never put in the work of trying to develop a business model necessary to systemize myself out of it. Right. Okay, got it. 
So now looking at what you're doing, right? So you obviously identify that there's an opportunity. Some things are going to happen here in Columbus. You make this decision to start 614 Startups, right? So walk us through how that's been, right? So it's been a year now. Mm -hmm. What have your key learnings been? And then what are you trying to do next? Like what's, what's next? What are your milestones or next steps for you? So key learning is just start. Mm -hmm. Wow. There was never going to be a good time to start that podcast. Yeah. Right. Because that's essentially what we started as. Mm -hmm. And what's been happening is that it's really difficult to resist the urge to do more things than just the one thing. Right. Right. So there's this book by Gary Keller, which I love. It's okay. called The One Thing. Okay. What a lot of entrepreneurs, what gets a lot of entrepreneurs in trouble mm -hmm. is that they never master that one thing. So right. we started off as a blog, uh, I mean, a, excuse me, a podcast. Okay. Right. Quickly, as the podcast started to get guests and we started to gain traction, mm -hmm. I started to see opportunities everywhere. Okay. And the idea for me now and where the business is now a year later is, hey, master this podcast game. Mm -hmm. Take your time. Really understand what it takes to produce a great podcast. Right. I mean, some of the, some of the best informational, because it's more like infotainment mm -hmm. that we're putting out here That's at 614 right. Startups. We want to educate, but we also want to entertain you okay. and hold your attention. Yeah. NPR. Okay. National Public Radio right. are the masters of that. Gotcha. You could be driving to an appointment mm -hmm. and you would actually take the long way and probably just make to. yourself late <laughs> just to listen to the end of an right. NPR story. Exactly. They call them driveway moments. Okay. And so... It, am I getting driveway moments? Mm -hmm. Why are you pivoting from doing the podcast yeah. when you don't have an audience so fixated that they're mm -hmm. willing to be late to meetings? Right. You know, so that was one of the biggest learnings is, is don't go do five other things yeah. if you really haven't mastered this one. Okay. Uh, and so for us, we're starting to focus on, well, what are the needs of the audience? Mm -hmm. How do we produce great content? Right. How do we really capture that audience's imagination? And finally, how do we change lives? Because okay. at the end of the day, by me saying, hey, there was never going to be a good time to do this, there are a mm -hmm. lot of people who listen to the podcast who are thinking about entrepreneurship. Correct. Can we be a platform where the learnings of all entrepreneurs are kind of distilled mm -hmm. in a way that when you tune in, you're educated, but you're also inspired to get started? Nice. Where we are right now, I think um, a year ago, nobody knew who we were. Correct. A year later, mm -hmm. even if someone hasn't listened to a podcast episode, mm -hmm. the feedback that I'm getting when I meet somebody is, oh, 614 Startups, yeah, I've heard of that. Right. The so next it's step working. now. It's working. Yeah, that's yeah. right. From word of mouth, the guests who have been on, I think we're on episode 21 in terms of pu published episodes. Okay. I think we have about 30 or so recorded right now that are mm -hmm. in post. But right now, it's no longer an issue of do you know about it. It's, it's the next step in the business now. I got to turn those people who just know about it into listeners, listeners, and I got to turn right. the listeners into advocates of the show. Right. So that's kind of where we are. And to the second part of your question is, you know, where do I see this going? Mm -hmm. I think in the most ambitious scenario. Yeah. Six One Four Startups is a media platform, mm -hmm. uh, like that is a magnifying glass. Okay. So let's say Columbus startup community is the sun. Yeah. Right? 614 Startups is a magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. Whatever problem we point that magnifying glass at, mm -hmm. we want to obliterate that problem here in okay. Columbus, Ohio. Okay. Because I do believe that entrepreneurship has the ability to change the world. It does. So for does example, say. let's say we all agree that early childhood education is important. Yep. Let's take it one step further. Mm -hmm. Early childhood STEM education right. is even more important. True. Yeah. Traditional education systems may not be training up enough STEM workers mm -hmm. as we need for the demands of this number one startup community now in the country. Right. How does 614 Startups point a magnifying glass at that problem mm -hmm. and use the entrepreneurship community here to obliterate that? Correct. And so one of the things that we're working on, there's a venture firm, and I can't really make announcements right now until yeah, it's official. No problem. But working with a venture <clears throat> firm and then a, a, a STEM education firm, partnering mm -hmm. them to to raise funds yeah. in order that uh, costs, mm -hmm. which is a big barrier right. to entry 
for STEM education. Either you're living in you know really nice neighborhoods where they're making investments in the high schools and the school systems to bring STEM into the public school, right. or you're having to supplement public school education by sending your kids to a camp of some sort. Yeah. This idea is about taking this venture company, using their networks, partnering them with this camp model, and bringing that to kids who otherwise wouldn't have access. Awesome. Now, that is our most ambitious goal. Right. You know, when 614 says, hey, the whole community is going to go right, and here's the issue we're going to look at, that whole entrepreneur community goes right, and we yeah. obliterate that Fix problem. It. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we always talk about is the whys behind what you're doing, right? And I think you just hit a big part of that why, right? There's a huge opportunity for us to change many lives in a positive way. And it's exciting to hear how 614 startups could actually help us to get there. Mm -hmm. That's phenomenal. Um, I hope you all heard that. But one thing that I took away from him was one thing, right? So you mentioned that one thing and that focus. And I think as an entrepreneur, um, a fellow entrepreneur, I can understand how you get pulled here and there. So thank you for sharing that. For all of our potential entrepreneurs and those that are out there that are running your own business, hopefully you took that one away and uh, hopefully it can benefit you as well. All right. So a little bit earlier, we didn't get to talk about it. Is there anyone you want to give a shout out to? We tend to miss those things, you know, sometimes when we have these these discussions. But is there anybody, whether it's a mentor or a parent, a sibling, a family member, spouse, anybody that you want to shout out? So shout outs are dangerous because you always okay. leave somebody out. All the time. So I kind of put so, you on the spot. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to try this and I hope nobody gets mad at me because I yeah. don't say, say their name. Okay. Um, so my parents, number okay. one. Yeah. Uh, yep. Instilled in me a lot of discipline. Mm -hmm. um, taught me that, um, you know, if you work hard, you can accomplish whatever your dreams are. They, they, and they role modeled it. They just mm -hmm. weren't talkers. Right. Uh, my mom, you know, reinforced how much she loved me even when I was messing up. Yeah. Uh, my, it's important. Yeah. My dad yeah. taught me responsibility mm -hmm. um, where other men may have uh, walked away. Yeah. He stayed. Okay. Um, not that there was a reason for him to walk away, but it's, you know, in our society today. Yeah. What you hear in the general public is not about the dads who really take their responsibility and fulfill that responsibility mm -hmm. and where their kids actually admire them as a result. Right. Um, my wife, of course, yeah. who stood by me while I was doing all, all my the crazy stuff. experimentation. <laughs> Even now, this is an experiment. Yeah. You know? So I'm not going to say like all my experimentation in the past and many more experiment, experiments to come. Okay. Uh, my two-year-old who... Um, Inspires me to, to be a little kid yeah, uh, and have fun. I mean, yeah, yep. business is important. It's serious, but not to take myself too too seriously because awesome. when I go home, I got feet in my face while I'm trying yep. to sleep. So, <laughs> you know, I can never be like, I'm just always going to be her dad. I'm nobody but her dad, you know. That's right. And, you know, a, a, a awesome. lot of, yeah, a lot of mentors along the way, a lot of people who, friends, brothers, sisters yeah. who supported me. All the guests, yes. yourself for putting sure. me on blast and Absolutely, all of that. So no doubt. <laughs> there are so many people to thank, you know. Yeah. So yeah, and everybody has played their part. Okay. Well, well, well deserved. Well deserved. So let me ask you this question: How do we help you? Right. So I know you mentioned the magnifying glass. I I get it. But like when the meat and potatoes piece comes in and the rubber hits the road, you're out here trying to help people through six one four startups. Put it out there, right, through your platform, helping to create exposure. But how do we help you to be even more successful with what you're trying to do? Put me on blast. Ah, just that easy, huh? <laughs> Y'all heard it, right? Put them on blast. Yeah, so, um, you know, that, that, that's, that's the easy part, right? Yeah. Getting, in front of the, getting in front of people mm -hmm. with all the technology and all that technology affords us to be able to do is, is much easier than it, it ever has been. Right. It's, it's, it's really, what are you going to do? Okay. Once you have that media attention. So I think Columbus Black, I, 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 if I had to guess, yeah. I would say your audience mm -hmm. appreciates authenticity. Well, I appreciate they appreciate that. the so, real. Yeah. Right. They, want entre they, they want to connect with people who are real, who mm -hmm. are down to earth, who don't just succeed and feel like, you know what, uh, I'm this, yeah. I, I'm better than you or, or whatever. And mm -hmm. I think what I would, I, I think I would be able to use or value the most it's both positive feedback, so if yeah. I'm doing things right, let me know. As okay. an entrepreneur, you don't get to hear that very much. Mm -hmm. As a leader, 
most people want to lead, but they what they don't understand is that all the responsibility, all the fault is on your on your shoulders. Yeah. And if something goes wrong, it's all you. Right. You know, so it can be a lonely road. So it's, it's that encouragement from the community that you might have if I'm it's doing something right. important. Yeah. But hold me accountable if I start, you know, tripping, mm -hmm. losing it. Yeah. Call me out on that too. All right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's 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 letting me know. Hey, this is what you said on on blast. We don't see anything happening. Mm. You know, gotcha. you, you that accountability is important. On. Yeah. You look like you're you're reaping the benefits from the platform, right? But how's that platform really changing the community? So that kind of back and forth of positive, but mm -hmm. also uh, accountability. Because you know, as a business owner, I don't have a board. I'm just a so I, I'm only accountable to myself at this point. Yeah. Um, I think my audience can really hold me accountable to the things that I project that I believe in as well. So okay. that would be a huge help. That okay. feedback. Well, I think we can hold them, hold you accountable for sure. Yeah. All right? So, all right, listen, y'all are hearing it directly from Elio himself, right? Here at 614 Startups with Columbus Black putting him on blast. He's doing some amazing things in our community. We definitely need to get behind him, help him continue to highlight the startup scene in Columbus. Y'all heard him mention it. Not number 10, not number 5, 3, 2. I think I left four out in there. <laughs> but number what? Number one. Number one startup community in the nation, Forbes, all right? So this is critical, and what he's doing is locally, he's putting out startups in the startup scene on blast, just like Columbus Black on blast. So nice job. I'm really proud and excited for you, and I'll make sure that I'll give you any feedback that we have for you. What I have for you is really positive, and I want you to keep on doing it. Okay. And then obviously, as we continue to see your success, if there's a need to ever hold you accountable, clearly, that's what we'll do. And I'll listen. I'm sure you will. All right? Mm -hmm. So on that note, y'all, we're going to wrap up. Uh, Elio Harmon, 614 Startups. Make sure that you all check everything out on ColumbusBlack.com to see what's going on right here in the city. In addition to that, if you have not, I mentioned it earlier, but download the Mile app to find out about things that are going on right here locally based off your geolocation, but you can use it anywhere. Promoters, make sure you download your events as soon as possible and share your information with the world to help make their lives entertaining because that's what we do. But on that note, I said it before and I'll say it again, all right? In order to know more about your future, you need to understand a little bit more about the past. That's the reason why we just put Elio and 614 Startups on blast. On blast, people. All right. One last question for you, man. Yeah. Is there anything ColumbusBlack.com has done for you? Put me on blast. All right. We're out. <laughs>